WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. The process for a possible seventh trial for Curtis Flowers is underway. Today, the Mississippi Supreme Court accepted the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to reverse Flowers' capital murder conviction. Flowers has been tried six times for the 1996 murders of four people at a Winona furniture store. Each conviction has been reversed for various reasons. Today's ruling means the case will officially be returned to the Montgomery County Circuit Court and District Attorney Doug Evans. Now, that that will happen September 19th if there are no appeals of the case. About 24 hours after a Gordo man was shot, investigators confirmed the gunfire was an officer-involved shooting. District Attorney Andy Hamlin confirmed 62-year-old Wallace Wilder died after being shot at his Grandview Gardens apartment complex. Hamlin says the investigation has been turned over to the Alabama State Bureau of Investigation. He did not release any details about the shooting. Wilder's family and law enforcement sources tell WCBI that the Gordo man had a knife when Pickens County deputies came to his apartment. Wilder was known to have some mental issues, and that's believed to be the reason law enforcement were there. Our sources also say Pickens County Sheriff Todd Hall was involved in the shooting. SBI has not responded to our questions about the incident. A Smithville man pleads guilty to a child sex crime. Kevin Lee Kilgo was charged with exploitation of a child in Lowndes County. He will serve five years in prison, pay a $2,500 fine, and then have to register as a sex offender. Prosecutors say the alleged incident happened in September of 2018. Investigators tell WCBI Kilgo was chatting online with the juvenile victim and started asking for sexually explicit pictures. West Point police need help identifying an apartment burglary suspect. The uh, burglary happened yesterday at an apartment in the Wendell apartment complex. The suspect was a passenger in a Ford F-150 truck. He was wearing dark colored pants and black and white shoes. If you have any information on this suspect, call Golden Triangle Crime Stoppers. A new state-of-the-art justice complex in Clay County is now open for business. The county today held a ribbon-cutting for the 27,000-square-foot building. The new complex is in the old Kroger building and has three courtrooms. One of the courtrooms can seat 115 people. Justice Court will be able to seat 150. County leaders say the new building is equipped to allow more high-tech presentations during court proceedings. We had... Um, Issues uh, during court, uh, limited space to park. Uh, we have more uh, uh, space for judges to have more court. Uh, this is a state-of-the-art facility. We had some upgrades with technology, and it's just a win-win for this city and this county. The building also has offices, meeting space, and secure holding areas. Time to turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson to get a first look at our forecast this evening. Keith. Under a gorgeous weather out there, get ready to make the most of your Thursday evening. A live view in Louisville, Mississippi shows all that sunshine, not even a cloud in the sky. We've got mid and low 80s out there with low humidity. A great evening of outdoor activities, I'm sure, are planned. Lows tonight will be down to around 60 in the Columbus area, back up to around 90 tomorrow. Uh, some of us could actually do the upper 50s tonight, but... Bright sunshine, picture perfect weather on Friday across the area as we get ready to jumpstart the holiday weekend. We'll have that forecast for you coming up. Mississippi State is doing what it can to support students whose family or homes could be in the path of Hurricane Dorian. The university is making sure students from eastern Florida know there's a support system for them at MSU. Students from the area are understandably concerned about their friends and family hundreds of miles away. Well, the university has some programs in place to help students anytime their hometown is in the path of a disaster. Anytime we have a natural disaster that's pending, we reach out to our students who are from the affected area. We offer them general support. Now we will have more about the resources available at MSU for students coming up tonight on WCBI News at 9 and 10. From flooding to tariffs, farmers have been facing numerous obstacles 
And that can not only affect their financial health, but also their emotional well-being. Our Riley Livingston takes a look at their struggles and some resources available to them. She joins us in the studio with more. Riley. What started out as a grant to prevent opioid misuse in rural communities has recently narrowed its focus to agriculture, agricultural producers and families. The Promise Initiative has set its sights on helping farmers handle stress. Tariffs, market uncertainty, and weather are just a few of the challenges farmers face, and this year's flooding has left many farmers feeling even more pressure. Weather um, patterns this year have been especially trying for those in the Delta, but also for folks around here. It's been uh, late planning and um, an uncertainty even early on if they would be able to plant. So uh, it, it's going to delay them getting crops out of the field, which, you know, perpetuates that cycle of, of stress. But farmers also face other occupational hazards that can lead to more problems. You show up to the emergency room for a sprained ankle after you trip coming off the tractor and, you know, boom, I got an opioid uh, prescription and start taking that. And now my, uh, the, the, the stress that I was feeling from all these other factors don't seem to be quite as bad, so maybe I'll slip into a pattern of misuse. To help spot the signs of possible stress, Dr. David Byes says Mississippi State Extension agents are being trained in mental health first aid. What we do want are those ag agents, those extension agents that are out in the community working with producers every day to know when to spot something that may be challenging um, them and a, a person that may be going through challenges and, and what to say, what not to say, how to be helpful. Um, how to ultimately connect them to care. In addition to spotting struggling farmers, the agents are there to help them understand they're not alone. Destigmatizing mental health is a large part of the work we do now. It just acknowledging that this is this is real. A lot of people struggle with this, and um, everybody's situation is unique. Uh, we don't we don't all encounter the same exact situation. Um, but there are some commonalities and, and most people do have difficult times and need, need that help. Dr. Byes encourages any farmer struggling mentally to call their family doctor, reach out to counselors, or talk to your extension agent to get connected with someone who can help. The student union at Ole Miss gets a $60 million makeover. We'll have that story coming up on WCBI News back a four-year project that gave the student union at Ole Miss a major makeover is complete. Our Allie Martin was on campus for the grand opening and shows us how the center of student life is already making a big difference. As the official ribbon cutting ceremony was underway on new steps and a larger porch, <laughs> inside the Ole Miss student union things were busy. Four years ago, work began on a $60 million project to renovate and enlarge the Student Union, originally built in 1977. The most important thing for us to, to push is that this is more than just a, a, a place to grab something to eat or a place to pick up your books. We want our students to get engaged here, we want them to have fun here and, and, and meet new people and really enjoy their experience at Ole Miss. An 80,000 square foot addition includes five well-known food vendors, kitchens, and a ballroom. The renovated portion houses a Barnes & Noble bookstore, coffee shop, and offices for various student organizations. There's even a Senate auditorium for our ASB Senate to meet every week to discuss legislation and things like that to affect the larger student body. It gives so much more opportunity to have a cultivating environment to make sure our student leaders have a place to meet, to share their ideas, to plan their events, and to have community. Ole Miss students not only help with designing and planning of the renovated and expanded student union, they're also helping pay for it Students have agreed to a $50 per semester student fee that will be used for capital improvements. Students not only wanted the facility, they stepped forward and said, we'll put our money where our mouth is. It's that important to us. You know, the kind of hashtag that's gone along with this year is hashtag this is your union, and that's truly what it is. It's for these students um, to make the most of their time here and really develop those connections with faculty, staff, and other students. Enrollment has more than doubled since the original student union was built at Ole Miss 42 years ago. Allie Martin, WCBI News.
The student union grand opening comes one day after a state-of-the-art student rec center opened there on campus at Ole Miss. Melbourne, Florida right now all quiet, but things will be changing down there by late in the weekend and early next week. More on Dorian after the break, but in our near-term forecast around here, lots of sunshine and we stay warm with low rain chances for forecast. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. All right, here's our time-lapse camera network from Columbus, Tupelo, and Vernon and Louisville today. Look closely. Do you see any clouds there? We are moving these pictures. You can see the cars moving on the streets, but it's been a gorgeous day. How about this? One of the best days of the entire summer. I would give this day about a 10 out of 10. Showers and storms back to the southwest and northwest. No bearing on our weather here. For the holiday weekend, guess what? More sun for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Just a limited chance for a stray shower, storm, sunny, and Monday. But let's just assume no rain until proven otherwise. Really, through all of next week, that's the way it's looking right now. High school football tomorrow evening, low 80s at 7 o'clock, 78 by 8, and then mid to low 70s by the fourth quarter. The college game Saturday, no problems whatsoever. If you're traveling to New Orleans, Memphis, or Atlanta, we're looking great here for Mississippi State and Ole Miss and Alabama here as we kick off the college football season. Currently in the mid-80s in Tupelo and Columbus, 85 degrees, 85 in Birmingham, 88 down in Jackson. It's warm, but it's dry. The humidity very, very low, and that's what we've been promising you, and it actually arrived on schedule. So enjoy it. Tonight, down into the low 60s, some spots, upper 50s. We're going to throw out of 58 degrees, especially in those low-lying cooler spots away from the city centers. And for your Friday, a great day, much like today. We may not even see a cloud, much like today. Highs, maybe a degree or two warmer, back up to around 90 or 91. But it will be a great day. The chance of rain is zero. Wind will be from the east and northeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour all across northeast Mississippi and west Alabama right there. Here's Dorian. Sustained wind at 85 miles per hour. Still uh, getting better organized. And there's plenty of warm water to allow it to strengthen over the next three days here. Maybe to a Cat 3 or a Cat 4 storm as it approaches Florida. Sometime by Monday, early next week, it's probably going to get somewhere over here in the Florida and then take a hard right turn back to the north. A big area of high pressure is directing it back to the northwest and eventually west and then it's going to find a little weakness in the upper level air pattern and probably go north. So that doesn't mean we're going to have any impacts or that does mean we will have no impacts from Dorian here in our area. So a lot of sunshine for a Friday, Saturday, even into Sunday too. Can't rule out a stray shower or storm there Sunday into Monday but on the back side of Dorian we're going to be sitting pretty here with more sunshine, more heat next week, low to mid-90s. Mississippi State quarterback Tommy Stevens gets ready for his first start as a Bulldog. More on that next in sports. Your WCBI Sports with Courtney Robb is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Tommy Stevens gets his first start as a Bulldog quarterback in just a few days. He's at a summer filled with proving that he's ready to take on the role. And it seems like he's done just that by earning the starting job and then unanimously being named team captain by his peers. But when Stevens stepped on campus, he set out to improve. And going into game number one, he feels like he has done just that. I wanted to be as, uh, as efficient. As, as I possibly could as far as not necessarily, you know, completion percentages, but things kind of like I was saying just a minute ago about getting the protection set the right way and uh, not missing many of, you know, of those things and, uh, you know, just little details. I want to be very detail-oriented detail and so, um, you know, kind of like I said in the very beginning, I thought that it was my best overall camp, not just because my uh, completion percentage was what I think was probably close to at its best that it's ever been as far as a, uh, a training camp perspective, but um, you know, some of those little things like sliding the protection the right way and knowing uh, when the defense is doing a certain thing, I think is probably um, maybe what I'm most proud of. There are still two more evenings left before college football returns, but if you need your fix sooner than that, then you're in luck. Juco football returns this evening. ICC opening its season this evening at home against Pearl River. And with more on the Indians, WCBI Sports Director Tom Ebel joins us live from Fulton with more. Hey, Tom. 
Courtney, football is officially back here in Fulton, ICC and Pearl River. They're back on the field. Take a look. We're about five minutes to kick off here in Fulton. Captains doing the coin toss. It's a beautiful sight. Football is back. Area guys all over the field, mainly for ICC. Some guys we're aware of from the end zone from the past couple of years. Corley Hooper, former North Pontotoc Viking at QB. The defensive, he's the linebacker. I should say that's Clark Mills. Corley Hooper will be at linebacker, but so many guys all over the field. EMCC at Hines, Northwest at East Central. Juco is back, but more big football going on over in Boonville. Chris Bolton has more. Tom, Juco football is back in Boonville as Northeast gets ready to take on battle against Southwest. Now, last season was a tough year for the Tigers. They posted a 1 8 record. And this year, they looked to replace arguably the best defensive player in the country in Juco football from last season, and Sam Williams was moved on to Ole Miss. Now, some of the guys who looked to step in and fill in his production, some area guys, you got Isaiah Hunt from Choctaw County on the D-line, and also the lone returning uh, linebacker with experience, you have Terry Joyner from Knoxby County. On the offensive side of the ball, you got some playmakers on the outside looking to step up from our area as well, Sir Marcus Evans from Tupelo. So if the Tigers get a win tonight, It'll be big for them. I mean, this is a very young and experienced team. So wins tonight will go a long way in boosting their confidence. Now we'll have highlights from tonight's matchup later on on WCBI Sports at 10. You know we got you. We'll have that and more. But for now, reporting in uh, Boonville, Chris Bolton, WCBI Sports. Thank you, Chris, for that report. And like Chris just mentioned, we'll have highlights from both of those games coming up tonight. And also, we'll have a score check-in from EMCC also beginning their season as well. They won't be at home, though. They're taking on Heinz Community College on the road. A little bit different than last season, whereas they kicked off the season against Heinz. That time, though, it was at EMCC. So a little bit different, but we'll have those scores and highlights again later tonight on WCBI Sports at 10. That's it for sports. Your last look is after the break. Sitting pretty here for the next seven days. There's a lot of problems going on in the weather world with Dorian down there in Florida. Uh, for us locally, though, I don't think we'll have any impacts, but there could be a stray shower storm Sunday and Monday. Beach weather, pool weather, a great Labor Day weekend coming our way. Yeah, Beautiful. It's a really good looking forecast. And there. tonight, you know, some spots can get into the upper 50s, so enjoy it. Absolutely. High school football, college football, all looking good for us this, this week. For change. Yeah. Looking forward to that, too. All right, thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Have a great night.